Pick the brick where you're rocking. Look at my head. Welcome back on a great summer day. Come on. I'm Pat O'Brien along with Steve Harbin and Victor Brick Jacobs. Hey guys, a good friend of ours is in the studio right now. Indeed. Uh, the co-founder, actually, and senior vice president of the Orlando Magic. Pat Williams. And Pat, I, we were just talking here. It's been almost 25 years since I sat in your house. Yeah, you came down and did a feature. We were adopting children left and right at that point, Pat, just adding them like cordwood, and you <laughs> came down, and uh, I think we, we eventually got to 19 total and 14 adopted, and you came and did a nice piece, hung out with us. Yeah, for an I, I think we had something like a Thanksgiving dinner down there, and, and yeah. Pat was able to name every one of these kids. I put him on the spot, and he goes, all right, this one's Sam, bam, 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 but he's still in that great house, right? And, and we also, Pat, had discovered at that point how to... Uh, Merge a turkey and a centipede for Thanksgiving. <laughs> wow! And that, and that way, every kid got a drumstick. Yeah, I remember that. Was, uh, I don't know uh, how you come up with all the names. You see, that's kids. I mean, I have three kids, and that was tough enough coming up with three names. Uh, when you have to name nineteen, so were they all in the house? And, and by the way, do you have any kids in the house no, left? Gone. The youngest is twenty-five now. The oldest is thirty-nine. So they're all out on their own. Wow. Uh, we, we do have eight grandchildren, all in Orlando. We we like that. Right. Like the grandchildren more than the children. Very frankly. Oh. Of course. Well, that's what happens. Exactly, because you can give them back to the parents. Yeah, that yeah. happens. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, now, Pat, we know because you're an executive in the NBA, uh, that you can't really talk about the lockout because you'll get fined. We want our listeners to know that he's not going to avoid any questions. He just can't answer them. Well, right? he did say he would answer them, but we would have to pay the fine. <laughs> no, and, so, I mean, that's, that's a little hard. Those are the rules. So, yeah, the, what league can you... it, the league makes it very clear yeah. that uh, only one person speaks on behalf of the, the NBA, and that's the commissioner. And, um, and by the way, he's on our show quite a bit. One yeah, thing about yeah. David, he has no problem coming on shows. Yeah, and he is, he is a marvelous interview. I, whenever he, I hear him, I stop and listen because he is he's a master. You know, I actually asked him on the air one time, Pat. I said, Commissioner, are you drunk with power? I actually asked him. I mean, you can, that's the thing anything, about Stern. It doesn't anything. matter. You can throw anything at the guy. He finds a way around every answer. He is so good. At, you know, well, his, I think his answer to that was no Van Gundy. He and our coach, Van Gundy, had quite an interesting winter together. Oh, and, uh, yes. And David, uh, and, and at one point, David made this statement publicly. He said, you will hear no more from Coach Van Gundy this year. Uh, that was it, no more. <laughs> coach, uh, well, I call you Coach, I feel like it, because you were writing about a coach here. You know, Pat is, is so prolific in so many ways, but... Uh, 56 book books have been written by this man. 70. I don't know, how many? Yeah, this is number 70. Good this God. One, the one that just came out. Of I mean, he just wrote 14 last I week. 14? <laughs> really, last you're, you're a little late. That's unbelievable. Well, this is called Coach Wooden, The Seven Principles That Shaped His Life and Will Change Yours. And it's basically about his father, who... When John Wooden was 12 years old in 1922, his dad handed him a piece of paper with seven life principles and said, Johnny, live by these principles and you'll have a good life. And John Wooden at 12, Pat, amazingly enough, folded it up, put it in his wallet, and kept the piece of paper there his whole life. Where, whereas I think, Brick, most 12-year-olds would turn it into a paper airplane. And we're all, and and by the way, put their chewing gum in it, you know. And, and we're all better off because of it. I think of I mean, it. I've lived, I've tried to live by those principles. I think anybody who gets that little plastic card, Pat, mm -hmm. you, you, you immediately say, well, how am I doing here? And, and that could have ended up in the garbage can so quickly. But uh, little simple principles like be true to yourself, help others, uh, make friendship a fine art, drink deeply from good books, especially the Bible, my favorite, make each day your masterpiece. I oh, love boy. This. And and Mr. Wooden, who was not formally educated, mm -hmm. he was a farmer from the Midwest, and, uh, and and he penned them in beautiful, crisp, concise English. Oh, it, it's, it's a Gives me a chill thinking about it. It's an unbelievable story. You know, it, it, what always interested me about Coach is that, you know, I had a grandfather similar to Coach, who lived to be 97 years old and mentally really? was sharp all the way to the very, very end, like, as Coach Wooden was. But, you know, Coach was almost forced to retire as a coach at UCLA. I mean, it was sort of that 65 is the retirement age. I just wonder what would have happened if he decided to go on. I mean, we got the Jack McKeon, 80-year-old manager of the Florida Marlins. Joe Paterno's 82 years old, still coaching at Penn State. Yes. If Coach Wooden could have kept it going another five years, 10 years. It's an interesting point. And you know, he, re he, he retired suddenly. He just made his mind up that weekend. Right. And he tells the story, you know, they had lost the year before to NC State. Mm -hmm. and, and, and they win in 75 down in San Diego. And some UCLA booster comes up and says, well, I'm glad you didn't blow it this year. That like was exactly it. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And for some reason, Pat, that just stung him to the core. And 
and, and his decision was made quickly. Nobody knew it. And, and he did talk about it later. He missed the teaching. He missed the practices. He said he didn't miss the games. But I don't think there's any question he had five good years left. And if you think if he'd won four more out of the next five years, right. suddenly you're looking at 14 titles. Unbelievable. Right. In, saw, in, in, uh, yeah. in 17 years? Yes. Oh. I saw him about a year before he died at the, at the UCLA-USC game. And, you know, he wasn't... A, uh, you can still make a conversation, but he's sure. getting old. He's right. getting old. Yes. But we had a great talk, and he actually, in this moment, talked about gratitude. And he said, "Pat, you of all people should be full of gratitude." And his last words to me was, "I love you." But he kept those. That's he kept those that piece of paper basically in his mind, yes. and all of his players try to live by him, or at least pass him on. Well, I asked a bunch of I, I tracked down as many of the UCLA guys as I could for this book, and I asked them a question. Were you aware of the seven-point creed from Joshua Hugh Wooden when you were playing there? They all said no. They all said no. And, and they said, we, I said, were you interested in the pyramid? No, 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 no interest. We were interested in three things. Playing time, grades, graduating, and girls. Yes. And maybe not in that order. <laughs> and, and it's at that, but now as we're adults, That's we're fathers, right. we're grandfathers, now it suddenly all makes sense. Now we understand what John Wooden, Coach Wooden, was doing with us. You know, Pat, you're with me on this. We are so blessed to have had John with us for the 99 years. Yes. There are certain times and spaces of history, in human history, as Confucius, you know, walked the planet uh, in China and taught <laughs> one of the great teachers of all time. Is he the Confucius of our time, the great teacher, John Wood? Well, that's a great point. I'm not sure John Wood never thought of pun, pun himself as Confucius. <laughs> he hated that nickname, the Wizard of Westwood. Hated it. He was the most, Billy Packer told me this, Pat. He said he's the most humble, famous person I've ever met. <laughs> You're right. And he never big-timed you. He never tried to impress you with what a hot shot he was. But you know, when you get right down to it, wooden wisdom, that, that little blue book that came out first, and I guess he was maybe in his late 80s when that came out. Mm -hmm. That book has sold over a million copies, and, and it's still in bookstores, and it'll, it'll be, it's an evergreen. It's not going away. That was the book that really launched his writing through his 90s. And, and I've thought about this. If he had died at 87, 88, his book on leadership wouldn't have come out. His book on mentoring wouldn't have come out. His book on the... The uh, uh, pyramid would not have right. come out. Uh, the book he wrote about his Christian faith that wouldn't have come out. So there is a I mean, higher his, power. Yeah, he has to coach alive. Pat, his best work came in his nineties, yeah. and, and those books were will do be more impactful, I think, than anything he did. So yeah, let's. Uh, that's a great point. Confucius wouldn't. <laughs> Pat Williams <laughs> is sure joining us. Never thought of that. But it's pretty good. All right, now Pat Williams is in studio with us right now with the Orlando Magic, and of course, when we come back, he's going to tell us. The answer to this question, is Dwight Howard going to be a Laker? It's, he's going to break it right here. Come on. <laughs> um, but we'll ask him or about the not. whole situation <laughs> with Dwight Howard. By the way, coming up in our next hour, you're not